Let's deploy an AI translation web application to Google Cloud in 10 minutes using the G Cloud CLI. I'm going to be doing everything in my terminal with NeoVim and Tmux and using this integrated AI tool called Avante. So I made a previous video on how I created this AI translation app. It's in the same style as this video, but there's no need to watch that. I'm just showing some images on the screen so you understand what this application looks like. And I'll talk briefly about it in this video when I start my timer. I've got my 10 10 minute timer ready and we're starting now. So I'm in Tmux here and I'm gonna open up NeoVim and let's just quickly talk about what we're doing. I have this index.html web application. This is what I'm gonna be deploying. And what I do is I have an input box that takes some text and then I pull, push that text into this translate endpoint. And that's, um, that's a post endpoint and it's in this fast API server here, which is running in main.py. And so this is the translate endpoint that I'm calling and I'm running this server on localhost port 8080. So I have some basic instructions for setting this up locally. And now what I'm gonna do is use my uh, integrated AI tool in order to give me instructions for deploying this to Google Cloud. So this tool is using Anthropic's Cloud model and it's called Avante. So I have a whole video on how to configure Avante and if, if you wanna use the same development workflow as me, you can check that video out. And so it looks like this is where the uh, readme stops, the updates it wants me to make. So I'm gonna come up, I'll yank all of that stuff, go down to the bottom of my readme and I'll just sort of stick that in here. I guess I can get rid of that. Okay, so um, so here's the instructions for setting it up. And I'm just gonna use this as a general guide. So let's get rid of Avante and we'll start working from here. Now I have this setup script, but I don't want that. Um, I don't necessarily wanna call all that same stuff to set my server up. This is what I'm gonna do in order to create my server. So I'll create that and we're gonna get that running down here. So um, G Cloud is not enabled on my project. If I type G Cloud, I have Zazen codes up here and I believe it was enabled. Let me try this again. Ah, but it's saying project, your project ID. I don't want that. I just wanna use the default project. So let's get rid of that line here. And I'm gonna run the rest of this. Okay, so we're setting up an E2 micro server instance with the buy-in on with this tag HTTP server. That's gonna be important. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so where, why will that tag be important? Right here, I'm creating a firewall rule. I wanna allow traffic through port 8080. Um, so let's just run that now while we're thinking about it. And it's given us this external IP. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna create a new file here called deployment.info and I'll just paste that IP in there. We'll need that in a second. Okay, so this firewall has been created, the server is up, so now we should be able to get into this. So we, we don't really have a command for doing that. Let's see if I can add a command for that. So I'm gonna say AE and I'm gonna say um, add uh, instructions for SSHing into the server and for copying files over to the server um, using the G Cloud CLI. See if it can do that for us. All right, this is how we're gonna SSH in. That looks good to me. So let's do that. So I'm going into Japanese Translator and now inside of here, it puts me to home Alex and I wanna install some things. So here's some setup instructions it gave me. And I definitely wanna do this apt get update and it's not letting me because of permissions. So I can probably do that as sudo. Let's try to do that again. Okay, next I wanna do this, but I don't wanna install Git. I'm not gonna be doing any Git cloning or anything like that. I'm gonna keep these open just to maybe help me out later. Um, but the next thing I wanna do is install Python 3 pip. So I'm gonna run this in order to get that going. Uh, while that's working, I wanna start copying my files in. So if I look at SSH, um, actually, what was it? It was SCP. Okay, cool. So this is how I can copy files with Google Cloud. So let's reference that. And I want to copy things over from this directory, this hosted Japanese app. So if I say ls um, star dot star, these are all the files that I'm going to copy over. It's just a really simple app that we have. So I'm going to say G Cloud Compute SCP. And the next thing I'm going to do is say uh, star dot star. I'm going to grab all these files from my local and I'm gonna put it onto Japanese Translator, that's the name of my new server, and I'll put it into the home user directory. So if this is working properly, I'm gonna open up yet another pane, a little mini pane here, and I'm gonna just look for my previous commands where I did SSH. So that's the command I used to get into the server. So I'll run that again, and we'll get inside of it. 
and I should be able to see these files. Okay, so in my home user directory, I have access to all of these. But um, the next step is going to be setting up my requirements.txt. And um, I can't, like, I can, basically it's setting up my Python environment for the API server. But I can't do that until I have access to pip. So I'm going to pause the timer and I'll start it back up when this command has finished running. Okay, I'm getting my timer back on because I looked this man db up thing up and it could take like 15 minutes so i don't want to wait for that but i don't think i need that in order to keep working here so i can oh wow it's starting to go all right anyways so while this is still working here we go all right i guess i jumped the gun but what i want to do is um install my requirements right so i need to use pip so i'm going to say pip3 install dash r requirements ooh, like this and let's get all of these going. So this might take a while too. Um, but while that's working, let's think about what the next step is. I have all of these panes lined up, right? But this bottom one, this is gonna be my API server. I wanna run that down here. So I need to get this environment ready to go for that. And that means I need this OpenAI API key down here. So what I'm gonna say is export OpenAI API key equals and now I'll need to get what that key is so I'm just gonna grab the one that I'm using on my local system so I can say uh, echo and I can print that open AI API there it is and what I want to do is PB copy that's just a way I can copy it to my clipboard so now I have that in my clipboard I'm gonna come all the way back down here and paste that in and so now this this is gonna be available inside of this specific environment on my server and so we're gonna do this to run our API as soon as these requirements have finished installing. And so just so I'm going to clear this now so that you can't see that key anymore and I don't have to blur it out. Um, and we will have to wait for these requirements in order to do that step. But the other thing that I'm going to want to do is to like basically host my web server on here. And that's this index.html file. So I'm going to do that using Python. So I can say Python 3 M and then HTTP dot server. And I want to serve this on port 80. So let's run that. And it doesn't like that HTTP.sever. I need an R in here. Okay, so this should run it. Um, it's giving me permission denied. Uh, in that case, I will need to run this as sudo. So let's do that. Okay, so now it's, it's serving this HTML on this port right here. That means if I look right now, I should be able to see that. So let's go back to my deployment info. I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna grab uh, the internet and we're going to go to the internet see if we can see my web app let's get it to the right size here so it doesn't look like we're able to see it um, let's make sure that i have http traffic enabled on this server so in this line right here i had this uh, firewall right so I create http and i allowed 8080 i want to allow 80 so I want to allow, make sure I'm allowing all of my HTTP traffic. This one's called HTTP. I'll just say allow HTTP, uh, I don't know, 80, whatever. And let's create that firewall. So hopefully that fixes things and then I'll be able to see my application properly. Uh, let's stop this and paste this in again. Let's see if we can get it. Um, I wonder if that's the wrong IP address. Could it be? Um, let's do net. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Here we go. I don't know. It was just swarming up or something. All right. So this is my translation app, but um, nothing's going to work if I try and like translate something. Let's do hello. hello and then that is not going to work. It translation failed and I'll definitely be getting some error. Probably it can't talk to my API server. Let's go to, to, to do the console. So it's it's failing to fetch, translate text, stuff's not working well. So we need to get the server running. And we already prepared this environment down here to do that. So what I wanted to do is just say Python 3 and then main.py. And this should get my server started. So it's serving on localhost port 8080. But that's not going to work very well for me. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I look at my index.html localhost, I don't want to be talking to the local host anymore. I need to be talking to my server IP. So I'm going to plug that right in here, down here. And for my Uvicorn app, I'm going to get out of this as well. I'm going to go into main.py and the, the very bottom, instead of local host, I want to put this on 0.0.0.0. Uh, .0 I want to listen on all addresses or sort of publish to all addresses. I'm going to rerun that. Now this is updated. I'm going to get out of that. And I shouldn't need this window open at all. Um, so I can just close this one down 
and now everything should be working. So here's my server again. Let's get out of here. I'm going to refresh this and I'm going to say, hey, just in time. And either this will work or the video's a fail. And there we go. So I got the output working of my translation app and looking at the logs here, I can see we're getting like a 200 request to get. That's just, uh, there's my timer. That 200 get was just to like load this web page. And down here, I'm getting my post request and it's a 200 because we were able to properly process that request. So a lot of this stuff really just came together at the very last minute, um, like I said, just in time.